Hi, and thank you for joining me. I'm Anne. In the last few episodes, I've been thinking about um, the birthing process as a metaphor for life changes that um, signal new beginnings. One of the most significant parts of the birthing process is labour. These days, medication can help relieve some of the pain, but a mother still must endure so much. Discomfort and suffering are an unavoidable part of bringing new life into the world. We learn from the Old Testament that God suffered when the people he loved didn't return his love or have love for other people. In fact, it distressed him with such intensity that he likened it to the pain of childbirth. For a long time, I have kept silent, he said. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. Through that agony and pain, he conceived a new way forward. He said, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. When Jesus came to earth, the things he said and how he behaved showed him to be God in human form. He said he came so we might have life and have it abundantly. Through what he did and said, he confirmed that he was God turning darkness into light and making smooth the rough places. This this process of bringing new life began when he came as a babe. It continued in a quiet and mainly unseen way until his baptism when the Father God affirmed him as the beloved son. After this, shape and form became visible through his teaching and service to people in need of healing and forgiveness. To his closest followers, he even explained the final stage that would give birth to this new life with God. But its form was not yet enough for them to grasp exactly what that gift of life looked like. During the Last Supper with his disciples, his labour of grace and love began. Although Jesus felt anxious and stressed, as it got underway. He was resolute and focused, as many women are when their labour begins. He wanted his close friends to be with him as he prepared for what was to come. He wanted their support at a time when he was feeling vulnerable. As the drama played out, the intensity of his pain increased. Like a woman giving birth, he cried out, gasped and panted. Some of his followers stayed close, watching from a distance, helpless to prevent his agony, but there to support him nonetheless. Then, in a loud voice, he cried out his final words. It has been completed. And, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Just as labour ends in an empty womb, so Jesus' labour of love led to an empty tomb. In that resurrection moment, Jesus, fully and completely alive, enabled every person to be reborn into God's kingdom of abundant life. Jesus said, this 
is how God, much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one needs to be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point the finger, an accusing finger, or telling the world how bad it is. No, he came to help to put the world right again. Later, the Apostle Paul said, God decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same line as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. In closing, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit surround and fill you. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.